Welcome once more to part 12. The last video introduced a new model, which is more general than CAPM in that it allows for returns across the market to come from places other than economic returns. But if those additional returns are zero, we're back to CAPM. Average market returns in the new model have this form, which we saw in the last video. To begin putting everything into a mathematical framework, the average ideal return of the market is the weighted average of the returns of the constituent securities that make up the market. The same goes for the average market perturbation returns. From the last video, there are two sources of return for the market in the next time period, ideal return and perturbation return. There is only one source of market return in the long run, ideal return, since the expected return of the perturbations is zero and the perturbations are mean reverting. However, there are two sources of variation or risk. This distorts the results from OLS. Therefore, ordinary least squares regression will not work as an estimator. In this video, I continue setting up and defining the pieces of the perturbation risk model. An ideal market is a market where returns are free from perturbations. There are no ambiguities or unanswered questions about relative performance or relative volatility. Neither is there idiosyncratic risk in an ideal market. Ideal beta is the sensitivity to ideal excess returns. Ideal systematic risk is determined by ideal beta and ideal market risk alone. Traditional systematic risk is systematic risk as traditionally understood through the lens of CAPM. Borrowing a phrase from traditional capital market theory, ideal systematic risk is the only risk that gets rewarded over time. Here is some notation showing the difference between CAPM notation and ideal notation. The model developed in the next several videos will be called the Forward Perturbation Risk Model. The Forward Perturbation Risk Model is an ex-ante model that starts with parameters and works toward expected market statistics. The Backward Perturbation Risk Model is an ex-post model that starts with market statistics and works toward parameter estimates. If ideal beta is the sensitivity to ideal excess returns, then the returns of the low cap M beta portfolio using ideal beta will have this form, where R sub PLT is the perturbation returns for the low cap M beta portfolio in period T. If we assume that the average perturbation returns are zero, then the expected average return of the low cap M beta portfolio, given that the average perturbation return is zero, is then equal to the ideal beta times the excess return of the market. Because the average ideal returns are equal to the average market return when the average perturbation is zero. Remember the form of cap M with alpha, which means if the average perturbations are zero, the return of the low cap M beta portfolio using the ideal expression can be set equal to the return using the cap M expression, including an alpha term. This looks as if in 12.5 A and B, the original form of cap M by Sharp is set equal to the form with alpha. While this appears to be true in this instance, it is not what is going on. If it were, it would tell us nothing about the systematic nature of the volatility effect. Moving around the terms of 12.5a and b, we get this formula for expected alpha. Although we are assuming for the time being that the average perturbation for all portfolios is zero, it's likely that the individual time periods have non-zero perturbations. This will make all the difference. That is, the aggregate perturbation returns are assumed to be zero over time, but not in the individual time periods. It will be demonstrated in the next couple of videos that alpha has an expectation different from zero, usually. We are now entering into the weeds of the model, and will remain there for the rest of the videos. The notation is often subtle. It's almost certainly true that cap M beta is not equal to ideal beta, while still maintaining these two identities. The sum of the cap M betas is 2, and the sum of the ideal betas is also 2. In order to get at the quantitative difference between cap M beta and ideal beta, we have to look at their formulas. The formula for cap M beta ex post is found in any textbook is as follows. The formula for ideal beta is similar. Note the differences. 
The formula for cap M beta is what it has always been. The formula for ideal beta is in reference to the ideal world. Let me derive the formula for the covariance between ideal portfolios. Remember that in the ideal returns of the market, there are no error terms or unanswered questions about relative performance, which gives us a second derivation for ideal beta. Next is the decomposition of market risk. Take the variance of both sides. I am assuming that the covariance between the market and the perturbations is zero. Ultimately, this is only an okay assumption, but it is good enough for our purposes. Finally, we switch to a better looking notation. Recall from the video on Jensen's Alpha that ex post variance of an asset using cap M components has this derivation. Take the variance of both sides, isolated constants drop out, constant coefficients get pulled out and squared, and of course we change to a better looking notation. Variance of returns for the low cap M beta portfolio under the perturbation risk model. Take the variance of both sides, isolated constants drop out, constant coefficients get pulled out and squared, and of course we change to a better looking notation. Under cap M and PRM, the variance equations are structurally identical and they have the same output, but the inputs are different. I want to take a few moments to emphasize that perturbation risk is not the same as idiosyncratic risk. Here are the differences between idiosyncratic risk and perturbation risk. Idiosyncratic residuals sum to zero across all securities in each time period. Perturbations likely do not sum to zero in any time period. Idiosyncratic returns sum to zero across time for each individual security. Perturbations likely do not sum to zero across time for any security. Idiosyncratic returns are another name for residuals in OLS regression. Perturbation returns have nothing to do with OLS except under unlikely conditions. Idiosyncratic risk is independent from traditional systematic risk. Perturbation risk is independent from ideal systematic risk, but it is not independent from traditional systematic risk. In fact, it's part of the formula, as will be seen in just a moment. The distinction between perturbation risk and idiosyncratic risk is the key that unlocks the volatility effect and other issues. In a later video, I will derive the relationship between idiosyncratic risk and perturbation risk, but for now it is sufficient to say that they are not at all the same thing and should not be confused. Back to market perturbation risk. If an index is divided into two equally weighted pieces, the high cap M beta portfolio and the low cap M beta portfolio, then the formula for the variance of the market perturbation is for at least several videos, I'm going to assume that the covariance between the perturbations is zero. This is not a good assumption. However, it keeps the calculations and reasoning clean and understandable. This assumption carries a story a long way forward before it needs to be discarded. After I have done what I can with it, and it ultimately fails, it will be much easier to insert the more realistic and complex assumptions back in. And here is market variance PRM decomposition. Now for a few items needed to complete the initial setup. The covariance between the ideal returns of the low cap M beta portfolio and the high cap M beta portfolio are as seen here. The next one is a little messy, so you may want to stop the video at times. We need the covariance between the low cap M beta portfolio and the market portfolio. The covariance between the return of the low cap M beta portfolio and the market portfolio equals the covariance between the ideal and perturbation returns of the low cap M beta portfolio and the ideal and perturbation returns of the market. Since I am assuming the perturbation returns are independent from the ideal market returns, the parts in red are zero and drop out. And with a change in notation and a little cleanup, it becomes the derivation for the high cap M beta portfolio is identical. The covariance between the high and low cap M beta portfolios follows a similar derivation. 
assuming that the covariance is zero, which is the same formula for ideal covariance between the two portfolios. Finally, using this information, I want to show the formula for cap M beta written in the mathematical vocabulary of the perturbation risk model. Assuming that the covariances are zero. Finally, stated without derivation. In this video, there have been a whole lot of formulas without calculation. The next video will have an example that will clarify what it all means, but it will only be a small piece of the story. Before I end, here is a summary of the formulas set to music. Mm -hmm.